What? The moment I got the camera, you were like, don't put the I camera in. Because I was that he was going to grab it. Well, if he did, that would have been a great shot. I recently travelled to Cape Town in South Africa. If you're interested in seeing wildlife, visiting places that have barely changed in thousands of years, and bucket lists of things to do before you die, or even if you're just thirsty for adventure, then Cape Town in South Africa might just be your next trip. So here is a top 10 list, plus one, of things to make sure you see and do whilst visiting Cape Town in South Africa. Quad biking over sand dunes. On one of our first few days, we went quad biking. This was great fun. We got a full hour of quad biking around the sand dunes and you get to see a great part of Africa. This location was about an hour north of Cape Town. This was the only issue. It was in the middle of nowhere. If you're going to get here, you need to think about how you're going to get back. We had negotiated with our driver, who was fine to wait, but it's something to bear in mind if you go and do this. But a totally well worth experience. Safari. Safari was something I'd always wanted to experience whilst at Cape Town. The drive to the safari was about two and a half hours in a minibus. Then they cart you around to see a bunch of animals. I did have a really good time and it was well worth the visit. I was able to see a lot of cool animals and it was great seeing many of the animals living together in a massive open space, which I had never seen before. But a lot of the time, the animals are very far away, which when dealing with wild animals, is just the way it goes sometimes. Although I did get my wish when the elephants came down the hills to see us. We were quite concerned what might happen next. Uh, oh my God. Is he meant to be? Then the elephant brought his mates along and we got a great view of these massive animals. However, what animals you might see are often far away, so take some binoculars and a zoom lens to better appreciate them. That's what safari is, pointing at animals from a hundred metres away. Camps Bay Beach. Cape Town offers some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. When we visited, it was their winter, but that didn't stop us from having a few great beach days, perfect for soaking up some sun or splashing around in the ocean. The beach is massive, and on a clear day, you can get some great panoramic views all around you. The water can get very rough, and I wouldn't suggest straying too far out anyway, since these are shark infested waters. With lots of super friendly bars and inviting restaurants to explore, the atmosphere and vibes of the beach was a consistent reminder that you are on holiday. It's a great feeling and well worth taking a few days out to enjoy. The Christenbosch National Botanical Gardens in Cape Town is one of the most important botanical gardens in the world. It offers some of the most amazing scenery and views I have ever seen. If you ever want to be transported back to the time of the dinosaurs, look no further. These plants and landscapes have changed very little in thousands of years. It looks like they're the backdrops for Jurassic Park. If you have some spare time, you need to check out this location and find the treetop walkway. It was amazing and it's the best place to view it all and take in everything. Here is my plus one for my top 10 list and we won't count it. Being a video about Cape Town, you can't mention South Africa and not mention the animals. And you don't necessarily need to go on a safari or a tour to see them. For instance, we saw plenty of colorful birds and lizards in the mountains. We also saw this, which is a mongoose looking for snakes. In the Cape of Good Hope, you have baboons. They just walk along the paths, so watch out although this one didn't seem too bothered with us. In Simonstown you have penguins. These are African penguins, which live here all year round, whatever the weather. So you can see these inquisitive guys in abundance. They love checking out the GoPro. You really don't have to go too far to see animals. 
like these birds on top of the mountain sharing some of my lunch. Or even these little African mice who enjoyed some crumbs. Africa is full of animals. Wines. South Africa is famous for its wines. They grow a lot of different types of wine here. Does it smell as it should? Am I meant to wave it around? And it's recommended that you try it. Although, mm. I absolutely hate wine. This Ribena has gone bad. Yours is fruit like melon, guava and passion fruit. Well, there's fruit in there, is there? But the fruit went a long time ago. Mm. Mm. National Wine Challenge 2022, top 100 and double platinum. I don't know how you people love it, honestly. I did enjoy the experience. La de da. You look really happy. Just saying. That's not a problem. I would definitely recommend checking out some of the vineyards. I just think you might appreciate it more if you like wine. Um, I'm sure we have to finish it. Well, I'm going to because I paid for it. But that doesn't make it stop tasting like bleach and nail polish. It's really quite awful. Although I did enjoy getting drunk. Oh, wow, it's that one's like wine. Another one. Ribena. Give everyone a swoosh around their mouth like some sort of wanker. No disrespect to the wine. I'm sure it was very nice. I just don't have the palate for it. I would definitely prefer Ribena. <laughs> Just awful. It's just awful. You like it? Now on to something more serious. Whale watching. Whale watching should be a must on anyone's bucket list. These southern right whales came this close to the shore to feed and breed. So Cape Town is famous for many locations to see whales. Seeing one of the biggest animals on the planet was definitely one of the best and most unique animal experience to check out whilst visiting Cape Town. And it is in a category all on its own. The minibus ride was about two hours and the views from the boats we were on had been minimal. Planning to watch natural wildlife isn't always easy. However, I was able to see and capture from a wide angle a shot of a baby southern right whale jumping out of the water twice, which was delightful to see. On our return, we stopped off to enjoy whale watching from the land to get some better views. This was much nicer than dealing with the crowded boat or the swaying of the water. Seeing these whales, even for a moment, is something I'll never forget and I'm glad to have caught a glimpse of these animals whilst in Cape Town. Lion's Head Mountain Lion's Head Mountain is the smaller of the two mountains facing Cape Town and thus is the mountain people like to walk up the most. Locals recommended that the hike would take approximately half an hour to walk for you, you stopped. Well, an hour and a half later, we had crossed ladders, pegs and chains to climb the rest of the way. Signpost did suggest an alternative, easier route, but that was longer and definitely less exciting. In total, it took just under two hours to get to the top with regular breaks. The views and landscapes, even on a cloudy day, had been hypnotic. Well worth the hike to the top, and another recommendation and a must do for Cape Town experiences.
Table Mountain. When we got our ticket for Table Mountain, at first we were a little worried. For the past few days it had been cloudy and we had been really put off going up, worried that it would ruin the experience. After a few days the weather didn't clear so we just went for it and I'm so glad that we did. When you take the cable car up the mountain, you go up past the clouds and into the heavens. Whatever the weather was like below, you can forget it. Here you're above the clouds, you're above the rain. All you need to worry about is the sun, the wind, and the views. From the top, you can see the clouds wrap around the mountains, and you can see wisps of smoke hang around everything. You can't see how high you are, as you are blanketed by a sheet of white, but you get a true feeling of isolation from the busy city below, which is a totally unique feeling. Table Mountain is currently labelled as one of the seven new wonders of nature, and I can see why. A few days later, the clouds disappeared, the weather had cleared, and we had to go back for a different experience. You can see for miles around. You can see the entire cape. You can see all the surrounding mountains in the distance. Our advice is, if you have the ability to go up on both a clear and a cloudy day, do both. But if you are limited for time, do not be put off if it is cloudy. You can still have a great experience being amongst the clouds, as well as looking down on the world from above when it is clear. I had two totally unique, unforgettable times on Table Mountain, and I would advise you don't miss out on this experience. The cable carts at Table Mountain have a rotating floor, which allows you to get a great view whilst you go up and down. Better to do this than to hike. At 1,084 meters above sea level, it would take a full day, and we didn't have that kind of time or stamina. Shark cage diving. Shark cage diving was a lot of fun and definitely one of the most exciting excursions we tried. These were called copper sharks or bronze sharks. They can grow to about 3.5 meters long, which was about the size of the biggest ones we saw. They take you out of the harbor to the shark cage location where the sharks were already waiting for us. They get you suited up with all the equipment and then you get about 20 minutes inside the cage. The cage fit about 8 people and it was attached to the side of the boat. This caused the cage to rock a lot and you were advised to hold onto the handrails. But then, the biggest marine predator that I have ever had the pleasure of being in the water with came right past the cage, chewing on some bait. That was a feeling I'll never forget and was one of the reasons for coming to Cape Town, and I was happy that it lived up to my expectations. Pretty soon, we were surrounded by sharks. Again and again, the sharks came closer to investigate the cage. It never felt nerve-wracking or unsafe, only the feeling of total amazement at these massive marine predators, which had been so close to me. Seeing sharks was something I will never forget. However, I have always wanted to see great white sharks. So the bucket list is ticked, but not crossed off for me just yet, but definitely a marvel to see at Cape Town. Swimming with wild seals. Swimming with wild seals was something I wasn't sure I would enjoy. I didn't want the seals to be in an enclosed area. However, that was not the case at all. We drove out of the harbour to a rock about two miles out. It was covered in African fur seals. They gave us a quick brief and told us to jump in. Immediately, the seals came to investigate us. Compared to the shark cage experience, swimming with the seals just felt way more interactive. They came very close, as curious of me as I was of them. We had been warned in our brief that they could bite. But these little nips had been their way of investigating us in a playful manner. 
Seeing how these seals effortlessly swim around the water, you can't help but be reminded that this is their home and we were the intruders here. They swim around so comfortably, and in so many, that it was sometimes a little disorientating. I found it easier just to focus on one seal at a time. With the blue of the ocean, the light hitting the water, and these beautiful animals gliding around, I think it's easy to see why swimming with the seals was something I put all the way at the top of my list. I was really happy to have caught such intricate footage with the seals swimming around and trust me when I say the footage does not do it any justice. That goes without saying. That goes without saying for all the experiences mentioned on this list, which I hope you enjoyed. I would just like to say, although I had enough footage of my travels to edit this top 10 recommendations for Cape Town, I had never intended to make this list, which is why it feels like a montage. That aside, I thought some of this information might be useful or interesting to some of you thinking of planning your own trips in the future to this great location, as well as helping me better remember my own adventures. If you enjoyed any of this video or found it interesting, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content like this in the future. It goes a long way and helps the growth of my channel, so it's much appreciated. If you have any questions, feel free to message me in the comments below and thanks for watching.